Um, disclaimer, before, start, before starting this video, I just want to mention that this video is going to be in English. Why? Honestly, I have no idea. I just want to try something new, just see what works out for me, I guess. With that, in the previous video, I mentioned you about the different types of epithelial tissue. And among them, one of the major type was simple epithelial tissue. Today, we will be discussing the various types of simple epithelial tissue. And from that, we'll be discussing one type in detail. So, let's start. Simple epithelial tissue. The name suggests itself. Simple meaning cells are in single layer. That's why it has been given the name simple. So if simple epithelial tissue is that epithelial tissue in which the cells are arranged in a single layer. But on the basis of type of cell present, in that simple epithelial tissue, it can further be categorized into three different types. Before I get into it, just let me check if the camera is in focus or not. Okay, it is indeed in focus. Okay, based on the type of cell that is present in the epithelium, uh, simple epithelial tissue is of three types. First is simple squamous epithelium. Second is simple cuboidal epithelium and third is simple columnar epithelium simple squamous epithelium simple meaning the cells are present in a single layer squamous meaning the cells that are present in a single layer are flat with oval nucleus centrally placed and obviously it is present on a basement membrane. Similarly, you have simple cuboidal epithelium where the cells are, well, cuboidal in shape. I mean, cube-like in shape. And they are also present on a basement membrane. Significance of which is to allow oxygen and nutrition to diffuse through so that the epithelial cells which are avascular can get it. And thirdly, you have simple columnar epithelium, which consists of, I mean, the name itself suggests, what do you expect? Columnar cells, which are also present on basement membrane. These columnar cells have a round nucleus present at their base. If you find my video slow, please watch it in a higher pace. You do have that function in YouTube. Make use of it. Okay, so that's your three types of simple epithelial tissue. Under which simple squamous epithelial tissue is again divided into two types. On the basis of what? On the basis of the type of margin of the cell. So if you look at the simple squamous epithelium, from above right then you'll find that the cells present in that epithelium either have straight margin as you can see in this diagram they have straight margin and when you look at it it looks like a pavement and that is usually present in front maybe in front of your house or in front of a building since it looks like a pavement, it's given the name, drum roll, pavement epithelium. But if the same cells have wavy margin, then in that case, the simple squamous epithelium is known as tessellated epithelium. Lated epithelium. Okay, and these were the major categories of simple epithelial tissue. Now I'll be showing you the 
places where simple squamous epithelium are present and what's the, their role in those places. So location. First location or location number A. A for alveoli. What are alveoli? Alveoli are the basic functional unit of your lungs, also known as air sacs, where the gaseous exchange takes place. The wall of the epi the wall of the alveoli is lined by simple squamous epithelium. Just like this. Then obviously there's your basement membrane. This basement membrane is of the simple squamous epithelium of your alveoli. Associated with the alveoli is a capillary that carries blood. The wall of this capillary is also made up of simple squamous epithelium. So let me make it here. That's your simple squamous epithelium of the capillary, which has its own basement membrane. So these three layers, number one, the simple squamous epithelium lining the wall of the alveoli. Number two, the fusion of the basement membrane of the simple squamous epithelium of the alveoli and the capillary. And number three, the simple squamous epithelium found in the capillary together forms the respiratory membrane. What is the significance of respiratory membrane? It is the respiratory membrane through which diffusion of gases takes place during respiration. So gases gets exchanged between the blood of the capillary and alveoli. How it occurs will be discussed in the chapter respiratory system. That was A. B. For B, you have Bowman's capsule. Okay, so Bowman's capsule is a part of nephron. Nephron is the basic functional unit of your kidney. This is your Bowman's capsule, which is a part of your nephron. Then there's glomerulus, which is also a capillary that is found within the Bowman's capsule. Okay. The parietal wall of the Bowman's capsule. The outer wall is known as the parietal wall. The inner wall is known as the visceral wall. The parietal wall of the Bowman's capsule is lined by simple squamous epithelium. Not only that, the capillary, which is the glomerulus, glomerulus is also lined by simple squamous epithelium. And this is where Filtration during urine formation takes place. Filtration. In a day, around 180 liters of urine gets filtrated, but just one liter of urine gets expelled from our body. So that's B. Then we have number C. C for silomic epithelium. Silomic epithelium. Okay. You might know that uh, humans have tube within a tube body plan. If you don't know, you will know right now. What's tube within a, bo a tube body plan? It is what it sounds like. There's a tube, large tube. And then within this large tube, there's a smaller tube. If you observe your own body and compare it with this diagram, in the simplest way possible. This is how you can level it. So this, the wall of the larger tube is your body wall. This is your body. You cut it and then see it 
in the simplest di diagrammatic way possible, then the larger tube, that is the tube of the body that is present, has a wall which is your body wall. The wall of the inner tube is your gut wall or the wall of your digestive system. So there's a larger pipe which is your body and there's a thinner pipe inside that larger pipe which is your digestive system. The wall of the digestive system is your gut wall and the wall of your body is the body wall. The cavity inside the gut wall is your gut. Okay. Between the gut wall and the body wall. Here's your body. Uh, imagine it in the form of a tube. Then you have the body wall for the outer tube and then gut wall for the inner tube. In between the gut wall and the body wall, there's space, right? That space is known as coelom. This coelom is lined by epithelium as well. And the epithelium that lies this coelom, lines this coelom is simple squamous epithelium. Inside your body wall, there is a layer of lining. And then outside your gut wall as well, there's a layer of lining. The one inside your body wall is known as parietal peritoneum or parietal epithelium. And the one lining the gut from outside is your visceral peritoneum or visceral epithelium. Why? Because it lines your visceral organs. Visceral organs are those organs that are found inside your body, inside your abdomen, which is floating in viscera. Okay, that's it. Then there's D. D for descending loop of Henle. That's just a way of remembering it. But it doesn't mean that just the descending loop of Henle has simple squamous epithelium. But what you need to know is this. So, loop of Henle is also a part of nephron, which is found in your kidney. It's, it looks something like this. It consists of two parts. There's your thicker part, which is known as thick limb. And then there's your thinner part, which is known as thin limb. The thin limb, as you can see, has a very narrow space inside it. So, only squamous epithelium is, uh, is, can fit inside of it. That's why only simple squamous epithelium is found where in the thin limb of loop of Henle. Oh yeah, by the way, function, right? For coelomic epithelium, the function would be protection because it's forming lining. It's forming the lining for visceral organs. So it's protecting the visceral organs that are found inside of your body. The visceral peritoneum, it's lining your visceral organs as well as uh, the parietal peritoneum is lining your visceral organ from outside. So obviously it's acting as a protective membrane for loop of Henle, it's absorption, which is a part of urine formation as well. Finally, E. E stands for endothelium. Indo meaning inside, thelium meaning growing layer. That is, endothelium is that layer which grows inside of your blood vessel. So, be it artery, be it vein, the innermost layer, they are made up of three layers. The innermost layer of your artery or vein is made up of simple squamous epithelium which has been given the name endothelium. But you need to know that in capillary, the outer two layers are not found. In capillary, it's just the endothelium that is present. It's just the simple squamous epithelium that is present. Uh, have you seen this before? Yep, in my first two examples. In the first example, the capillary associated with the alveoli also had simple squamous epithelium, and this is known as endothelium. Similarly, the Bowman's capsule uh, inside of which 
is the glomerulus is also lined by uh, simple squamous epithelium which is known as endothelium with that we conclude the topic of simple squamous epithelium to revise it so simple epithelial tissue means it is epithelial tissue in which cells are arranged in a single layer it is categorized into three types on the basis of type of cell first is simple squamous epithelium second is simple cuboidal epithelium and third is simple columnar epithelium in simple squamous epithelium flat cells are found arranged in a single layer in simple cuboidal epithelium cube like cells are found arranged in a single layer and in simple cuboidal sorry columnar epithelium column like or cuboid like cells are found arranged in a single layer simple squamous epithelium can further be categorized into two types on the basis of type of margin of the cell if the margin of the cell is straight then that simple squamous epithelium is uh, your pavement epithelium because it looks like a pavement when you look at it from above and if the margin is wavy then that is your tessellated epithelium simple squamous epithelium are found in different parts of your body and they have different functions depending on where it is found for example number 1 a a for alveoli in alveoli it is a part of a respiratory membrane and it helps in diffusion of gases b b for bowman's capsule in bowman's capsule it is a part of it lines the parietal wall of bowman's capsule as well as forms the endothelium of glomerulus helping in filtration during urine formation number 3 it forms the coelomic epithelium which protects your visceral organs number 4 it forms it lines the wall of the thin limb of loop of henle which is uh, which helps in absorption during urine formation and finally number 5 it forms the innermost layer of your blood vessel with exception of capillaries where it is the only layer present and with that we are done with it in the next video we'll be coming with something new bye see you